everyone. So um, welcome to this um, special edition of Totally Unscripted. So um, today I'm joined by Jason Carlson, and um, some of you might also recognize Steve Webster here. So uh, Jason has been uh, working on a really interesting add-on um, called Side Study, and um, I'm completely blown away with the level of functionality that they've got into that add-on but also how well aligned it is to pedagogy. So I think it really has a very sound uh, core to it. So I thought it'd be um, interesting for the community to, to have uh, Jason and Steve along and um, say a bit more about size study. So I suppose, uh, Jason, we'll start with you. Where, where, where was the, um, well, I suppose, what, what was your kind of origins for coming up with, with side study? Where, where did it begin? Uh, so in my classes, I I, I kind of started doing a flipped class model, and where the students, you know, watched videos uh, before class and came prepared, and then things started getting a little more complicated with videos, especially with accessibility for uh, students who are who are hard of hearing. So we have to caption everything. Uh, so it became which we should be doing, of course, but but it became it, it, it's so cumbersome and, and time consuming if I make videos for class to be able to caption them. And I thought, you know, videos are pretty much the same as me lecturing anyway, which, you know, isn't the most effective thing to do. So I started trying uh, guided reading with the students, you know, saying, saying, go read the textbook before class just it's completely ineffective. Uh, but I started doing more guided reading activities, kind of study guides, you know, that they would, that students would use when they, when they read the textbook before class to help them guide their notes. And I, I found that those were extremely effective. They were more simple for me to make than videos. And the students were, you know, reading, actually being engaged versus, versus just watching a video, watching a lecture. And I, I started, you know, incorporating a lot of technology into those more. So I, I, I used form fields and and the developer tools within Word to make the, you know, these these fields that uh, of notes that students would fill out while they read along with the chapter, to prepare for class. And then I made fillable PDFs and so on. Started linking audio and video, and but but all that was very time consuming for me to create. And this kind of developed into this idea of making a program where teachers could make study guides and note templates and things to help students read, to help students understand videos, uh, to make to make like watching and reading more active, where students could have their own input. And so it really started as this really simple idea of of kind of doing the same thing that you can do with Microsoft Word mm -hmm. in creating a form field with a with, I don't know, a 70 character tag on it that when you click on the box, it says, you know, in this section of the chapter, what is the definition of, of you know, selective media? Um, so the students would know where to look in the book and then know what to write for their answer. And that was really the vision originally. But then we got into, you know, working with Steve and using app scripts and really the options for what you could do opened up so much. And, and maybe that was a bad thing because it led to so many different features and maybe we should have just focused on a few simple things. Um, but but then it, I started kind of realizing this could be this whole learning platform to do multiple things. And my project was for doing it on my sabbatical leave. And so that kind of tied together. I've got this idea, do this project. Um, here's app scripts or Google add-ons, which I had never really heard of before. It kind of all fit fit together and and it really evolved during the building process especially with Steve's input on what app script could could do and and it, it seems like it could keep going for a long time but I think I think now where I'm at in it I've had just so many personal responsibilities over the last nine months or so that I had to kind of back off from it mm -hmm. but now I'm ready to and, and able to have some time in my life to put more into it and um what I really want to work on now is kind of ease of use of it and getting the word out, word out more. And that's, I think that's one of the big things that we need to work on um, in the add-ons is ease of use for a more novice, for a teacher who just wants, who likes the idea of the pedagogy behind it. But, you know, how do they learn all the add-on mm -hmm. ins and outs? Yeah. So um, when you started, were you able to 
um, create a, a prototype yourself, or did you just have a kind of an outline that, and then you you know found people like Steve to kind of turn that into reality? Yeah, I really, <clears throat> I had a little bit of coding knowledge. I worked with uh, McGraw Hill Higher Education, and I worked with some of their adaptive learning programs, and they've got their own you know, they've kind of built their own coding language in there. So I, you know, I, I was aware of coding and stuff, just logic, logic sequences and stuff. So I thought, okay, if, if, if this, then this, I knew those kinds of things could yeah. happen. So I knew the, I knew the capability was there, but it really, it, it, it wasn't until I started picking like Steve's brain and it was before Steve where someone brought up, well, maybe use you know, because I was working with Microsoft Word, but I knew how big Google was becoming in education. Mm -hmm. That somebody said, well, there's this app script thing or there's add-ons you could do. And then when Steve and I really started talking, I said, here's what I want to do. And he's the one who said, well, yes, you can do this. And yeah. it, it pursued from there. So so really, I didn't, I haven't done any coding in app script myself. It's all been working mm -hmm. with Steve on that. Were you able to give a quick demo just so people can see what side you saw you look like? Yes, sure, I can do that. Um, so I, I thought it would be best to do the final product of what the student sees. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, there's three different add-ons. There's the teacher add-on where you build the assignment, the student add-on where they complete the assignment, and then the report add-on which collects all the data. And and that's one of the difficulties with it is that to do all this stuff, you've got to kind of navigate all these pieces. And I would love to you know figure out a way to make it easier for the teacher, the, at least the teacher to use, where everything can kind of be all in one rather than jumping around to this doc and that doc and this add-on and so on. Um, but we can try the, we can show the student one on me, an assignment I used in my microbiology class. So I suppose I should share my screen here. As you do that, I'll add that it was a challenge to have three add-ons integrate and talk to each other. That was something I, 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 I've never tried before. So we're able to tie together a teacher add-on, student add-on, both using docs, and then a Google Sheets add-on for gathering the information and creating out-of-the-box reports. So that was one of the uh, uh, opportunities of putting the project together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did you go about solving that? I'm trying to think. Um, is, it, is it just using ideas? you know, the, the user identity to tie these things together or did you come up with something else? Yeah, there's uh, named ranges, not only in Google Sheets, but also in Google uh, Docs. And to my surprise, if you copy a Google Doc to create a brand new instance, uh, name ranges come over with it. So I use mm -hmm. that as like hidden met metadata to link things together. So I just pasted a link to a student assignment in my address bar. And so this is really what students would experience when they when they started, they mm -hmm. would follow follow the link or something. And you can see the link is a copy. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, Steve automatically added it on there. So every student makes a unique copy of the assignment, not using the original assignment. So students see, you know, do you want to make a copy of this assignment? And they make a copy. And so this is stored in their Google Drive. And I think that's one really special thing about it is that all of this stuff, all of the data, all the student input is not shared on some separate server. It's within mm -hmm. the student's drive and within the teacher's drive, not within ours at all. And that really bypasses, you know, all of the privacy, data, data privacy that we don't handle that at all. It's all within their drive. Yeah. So if they're using Google Drive, we don't even have to mess with all of that stuff. And, you know, we don't have to have servers to store all of this, all of this data it's all within everybody's own accounts. So we can see a, an assignment comes up and I would have built this previously in the teacher app. Mm -hmm. um, this one is from a microbiology class. Now it was environmental science class, um, microbiology unit. So I wanted them before, the, before they came to class to be familiar with these microbiology procedures so we could get right into the activities. So mm -hmm. this one involves videos where they might watched micro procedures summarized the procedures, answered some questions on it. And then when we came to class, they were more prepared to do it. Um, so students would, um, if, the, if it's the first time they're using it, they would have to get the side study for students add-on, but mine's already mm -hmm. added. So we go side study for students and I'm on 
our school school Wi-Fi here, which is really spotty. So it may be a little slower. Students automatically enter their names. And this creates their document in the report. And the nice thing is that this tags the document. If we go to the if we go to the footer here, student's name and when they started the assignment. Mm -hmm. And this is something we worked on that that kind of couldn't be messed up. So students couldn't take some other students document and put their own name on there. You know, it's all tied to their tied to the reports. Mm -hmm. um, these gray spaces are where students would answer their questions. So these are the these are actually kind of hidden tables. And these are what Steve has tagged with metadata. Um, and so if we click here and we click the sync icon, it's going to pull up the information I tagged to that spot as a teacher. So in here, what I want the students to answer is the guide on the side here. What is a Petri dish? What is, you, what is it used for? And what is typically inside a Petri dish? So, oops, sorry. And there's a video icon tag to it, basic sampling. If you go to the video playlist, we've got YouTube videos that we can add in the video playlist um, for students to get that information. So it doesn't have to be text-based. It can be video as well. And we can see basic sampling. When I click the play icon, the YouTube video plays right in the sidebar here, so they can so they can watch the video and answer their question over here, or they can or if they click the launch button, then it comes bigger over over the screen. And these are just things I added as the teacher, and I was able to tag the question with a specific video that they that they need to watch. So the student would type their answer here. They can click still thinking or answered when they're done. And when it answers, you see it turns green showing they answered. And they're automatically prompted to do some metacognitive activities. Hmm. Say if it was hard, fair, easy, and send me any questions. And this information all goes to the reports. Um, so I can see where the students struggled, what questions, and what questions they had. And it says they answered this one. They can change the answer and click I changed it. And we give them a mm -hmm. limit of four on I, change, I changed it. And then they can jump to the next question and see my next guide on the side for that, for that space, see the next video I tagged and so on. And we'll pretend here um, that the students are gonna use the peer review feature. So that's where this, the teacher can turn it on that students can review other students' answers. So if we click on give help, what we see is this peer review form, and what they see is two other classmate answers to that same question, and they can only do this after they've given an answer themselves. Mm -hmm. So if they click here, they see what another student answered for that same question. Yeah. And, and they can't, Steve was able to turn off copying and pasting for this, so you can't copy that and paste it as your own answer. And if you try to leave it up, and if you watch my mouse go to the document, it disappears. <laughs> so it so it stops students from just writing another student's answer in yeah for theirs and they would give feedback to the student rate the question um, and they have to do two of them at a time mm -hmm. so they see another student feedback rate it and share and all of this goes to the other students anonymously and goes to the report so students can basically grade each other's assignments um, using using the peer review feature. Some of the other features would be, I really like the flashcards myself. So the flashcards are automatically made based on the guide on the side that's attached to a uh, student response area and the student's answer. So if we take flashcards in order, we see the guide on the side for that first question and the student's own answer. And go to the next one, the guide on the side for this answer space, and the student's own answer. So it automatically makes these practice flashcards based on mm -hmm. their based on their notes. So that's basically the student add-on they go through. There's multiple choice questions as well, which are great for really quick um, feedback. And these are automatically scored and go into the report. So and, and I love this that we can do multiple choice questions in a document and make them automatically graded. We write the question right here with the choices, and they click their um, choice, submit it, 
and it tells and you can and you can have them give instant feedback or not um, and it scores this automatically so I like doing that with these assignments because you know it takes a long time to read their answers and if you have some instead auto graded multiple choice mixed in it's a lot quicker assessment yeah. on them and if you apply it to what they were doing then it should align with what they wrote in there I, I suppose for for you Steve uh, some of the headaches knowing how Google Docs um, are, are structured um, was it quite difficult to get things like those you know the, the tables and then changing color uh, from the sidebar or was that once you got your head around the, the Google Doc structure it was quite easy to do? Yes that's a good question um, nothing's always easy that's for sure <laughs> perseverance uh, pays off uh, yes highlighting and navigating uh, from the right sidebar back to the document and in a timely fashion without much of a delay so you use techniques right so where possible bring in an array on the client side and everything's in computer memory to speed things up so that's a technique but jason did ask me to do things that wasn't possible in google docs <laughs> and that's where i said how powerful can app script be <laughs> so yeah. so one example he said uh i would like a content box and i said what's a content box in your opinion he says well i want some text but then I want to hide it with a little place marker that there's hidden text. And then I want to toggle that and bring it back up. And I think a use case, Jason, for that was open source material. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So basically creating an interactive textbook in Google Docs where you would just copy and paste uh, content from open source textbooks and then insert insert assessments in between the reading. So they read some, they answer questions, they read some, they answer questions but then they want to turn in an assignment or just look at their notes. You don't want to print off 20 pages of a chapter. You want to hide the extra content and just see your answers. And that's what the content boxes are able to do. Right, so leveraging app script and some behind the scenes techniques, uh, it was possible to do that. So, so <laughs> I was like, wow, we actually did something that Google Docs isn't designed to do. That's pretty neat. Um, and then when it came to embedding videos, you can't really insert a, a video but we came very close of doing the same thing right bar right sidebar experience with a pop-up yeah. dialogue or modal uh, to simulate that because it's always nice uh, to work without being distracted by going to another sh uh, browser tab wherever possible try to yeah. stay there and so uh, a great deal of attention was put to that and, and we've come very close to doing that and what was the the student feedback being are they being uh, has there been any pushback about using add-ons or uh, once you explain it to them or are they quite happy to get on with it? Has there been any kind of common problems you've you've encountered? The, the students figuring this out has been really actually easy. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't in, in the college world, we don't really use um, G Suite much, but all of the students have coming from the K-12 world. Right. So this, it, it really, you know, it's like, we're, we're gonna be using Google add-ons who has a, you know, who has a Gmail, who doesn't have a Gmail account, we have to set that up. And everybody does already that they've that they've used previously. Um, it, it, I, I wish we could make it a little easier to onboard students on onto this. That has been one of the difficulties. When they open up an assignment, um, the first time they open an assignment, they they probably don't have any add-ons yeah. in there. So they have to add side study for students when they first do it. And so they have to go to the add-on store and search side study for students, unless the teacher or the institution has preloaded it for their accounts. But mm -hmm. in college, this isn't going to happen. So they have to do it manually. Um, they have to go add it and, and realize how to use it. And then it pops open this new blank document um, instead of the original assignment. So they have to, you know, go back. They get a little confused the first time they use it. Um, and, and one thing that's difficult is that um, this document, when we first made it, was, was made using the side study for teachers add-on. So mm -hmm. when the students first open this assignment and they, and, they've, and they don't have the students one on there, they go to add-ons and it automatically lists side study right. for teachers. Yeah, And so many students will go side study for teachers and add it on there. 
and the teacher menu opens up and they have no idea what what to do if they don't read my directions first of ignore the side study for <laughs> teachers add the side study for students so i would love if i could you know i get how this is convenient for add-ons that use the yeah. same exact the same exact add-on for that attached to the document but i would love to be able to turn off side study for teachers when the students open it and automatically tag it with side study for students to get them to to be able to add it you know that would i, I think that would really ease the process of getting students onboarded it's it's ironic that um, a feature of app script designed to, to make add-ons easier to use is probably working against you in this yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. i, re I re realized in you know 99 of 100 cases it's if not more it's people love that feature but i think if we I think that feature should be kept, but maybe yeah. a little a little control over it would be would be beneficial to be able to automatically tag a document with a certain add-on in that menu. I take it the the student add-on is free, is that right? And is is there a uh, a premium model as part of this? So we have it that yeah, anything student related is is free. Um, the teachers there is a there is a free model that limits some of the use of the more premium features like the video playlist, uh, peer review, uh, flashcards, and so on. And then there's a paid model that we have at just uh, $10 a year for a teacher. And they can basically deliver it to as many students as, as they want. Uh, one of the other aspects um, I, I thought uh, was really good about um, the add-ons you've got is you've got a very clear um, privacy policy and data policy. So, um, you know, you've, you're clearly stating on um, your add-on, you know, what authorizations you're using and um, what data, if any. And I think it's very limited the data you're, you're, you know, you're accessing. Um, it, is there how how did you go about developing those? Were you using existing examples of how other add-ons were? marketing themselves or did, did you just start with a, a clean piece of paper and work out what, what you wanted to do? I think Steve kind of provided me with a template for some of the things to include. Um, so he did he did a lot of the technical aspects of it for what needs to be included. Um, for, for my part, I looked at a lot of other example privacy policies of, uh, of, other, of other products to see the wording that I could use in there. And I think we kind of just tried to cover everything, cover everything we could in there, yeah. and make it make it more comfortable for, you know, for users using using these things. I don't know, Steve. What's you know what's what was your perspective on it? Yeah, I, I agree with what you just said. Another thing that came to mind, I remember reading in Google Plus communities like for App Script for the education space of a, a concern about recording student emails. Mm. Well, when you have your developer hat on, that is like the famous key <laughs> reference yeah. to the user. So I believe, Jason, what we did, we said, well, let's identify by the student's unique doc ID. Mm -hmm. And so we don't actually record the student email because we wanted to try to uh, answer that concern ahead in the design. So if the question comes up to say, well, we're not going to use side study because you're capturing students' email addresses. No, we're not. So that's one of the things that you have to think about, hopefully ahead of time and not react to it later. Yeah, we can look at one of the reports if you if you want to take a look. You know, so much so much is collected when students interact with this. All of their answers and their and their peer review, their time in it, and everything. And, and we tried to organize it into various uh, sheets, various sheets on the report. And it's really kind of unlimited on how we can analyze this data from the students as they interact with it. Um, and and <laughs> if I think our, net, our, our report add-on right now is simply, um, is simply a couple buttons in, um, I don't know what you would call this, Steve. It's not, a, it's not an add-on on the side, it's just, um, these four features up here tied to tied to the add-on where we can the refresh button just pulls in the latest student data so I mean if 
Um, it, it shows you from the last refresh what students have done. So if you want to pull in the latest data, you click refresh. If you enter scores and feedback, it pushes it out from the report back to the student add-on. We've got a list of how-to videos and then report an issue. But mm. um, so the, the report add-on is simple. We would love to build this out. So it is this really robust add-on where, where you can really dig deep into all the students' data, see a student where they struggled, generate charts and mm. so on based on this information give feedback to the student from one spot. Um, but, but right now, it's just a lot of data all, all together. We get, so they get a summary report, and we see the student's name that they entered. And here's the doc ID that we mentioned. <clears throat> they can, if you want to look at a doc, you can conveniently look through each one, one at a time, if you actually want to open up the doc and read it right from this spot. So this is really a kind of a time saver versus even going to classroom mm -hmm. and, and looking at each doc. You can do them all straight from the report. Um, if there's in this in this one, I haven't. This was an ungraded assignment, so uh, we don't have question score, multiple choice score, or peer review. But it can summarize it here. Uh, the just-in-time teaching—that's what this report is for. The difficulty whole class question feedback. This is where all the class data is aggregated, where it's the question ID. And that's the guide on the side related to the question. Mm -hmm. And how many students marked it hard, fair, or mm -hmm. easy? So we can we can instantly see which questions were more difficult. You know, we've got this one where four students yeah. marked it hard, and this one where five. Um, so if we come to class, we can address these ones versus the one mm -hmm. where nobody marked it hard. If the students do give you feedback on that metacognitive part, you can see it mm -hmm. here. And then um, we can send feedback right back to the student add-ons here. Mm. So if we if we save this, now it will publish back to the student add-on, and they can see it associated with the question. On the, on the peer review, this is we, where we see how the students rated each other. So we can see the percentage of questions they answered. And this just is a calculation based on how many student response areas and how many they clicked answered on. Flags are whether another student flagged any of their answers, such as if they were blank or if they were plagiarized mm -hmm. or something. Um, and we've got two response ratings. So how did your classmates rate your original responses? And this is a percentage. And then how did classmates rate your updated responses? So if you made fixes to them. Mm -hmm. So you can see if students improved um, from before to after, how many pieces of feedback students viewed how many pieces of feedback students gave to other students, how that feedback was rated, and then we can see each student's specific feedback that they gave. So you can really dig into um, mm -hmm. the interactions they had with other students. And this is something I found that you really have to model this to the student, to your students, how you want them to interact with this peer review. If you want good them to give each other good feedback and accurate ratings, you really have to model what you want them to write, how you want them to rate, mm -hmm. how you want them to rate the answers. Uh, the scoring and feedback, you can see their individual answers, and you can give scores on scores on the questions. Um, multiple choice, automatic grading of these, original versus final answers. You can see, you can see their original answer and how they change their answer. So this one is good to see if they went back in and tried to fix things or if they just stuck with their original responses. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for uh, taking the time and, and sharing what, you, what you've been up to. It's fantastic. Thank you. We appreciate it too. And if, if anybody has any feedback, you know, we would love to hear it ways you think it could be uh, made made a, made a better product or, mm -hmm. or, or tricks or something. You know, I think it would probably be hard to find a solution that Steve hasn't thought of, but <laughs> I'm sure we would, we would welcome it if you saw one. Yeah.